Spy TV here once again. This is Diane Castillejo, and today in our episode, we are talking tennis, world class tennis. Super happy to have with me two guys that I've been watching, covering for a long time. They're, they've been in the national team, winning so many medals for the country in the Sea Games and playing Davis Cup for so many years. They're world ranked, of course, they've played in the Grand Slam, and they've just won. So we're going to talk to them today. Welcome to Play by TV, Chet Huey and Ruben Gonzalez. Yahoo! Thanks for having us. Thanks, Thanks. Diane. Thanks for having hey, us. Hey, guys. Yeah. Great to Super. See you again. Yeah. First of all, tell us where you are because we are traveling all over the world right now. Where are you, Ruben? I am in Granby, Canada, outside of Montreal, playing another ATP Challenger event. <laughs> yeah, and I'm back home this week outside Washington, D.C. before I go up to New York this weekend. Uh, so. Play the U.S. Open. All right, so first, congratulations are in order. You guys have been doing so well. I've been following your doubles, like, se series this whole year. It's been incredible. You've been in Australia, Europe, U.S. Of course, you also won the gold in the SEA Games in Vietnam. And then you're back in the tour. Ruben, you just won a hundred fifty thousand dollar tournament challenger in dominican republic yes yeah yeah it was, a, it was a great tournament biggest tournament i've won so far in my career so uh yeah i'm happy with that and my, my career ranking now which uh i'm happy too so i try, had a great week too last week so um philippine tennis has been doing good this week so happy with that yeah super and chet in in canada you we're in the final. You reached the final of a hundred eight thousand dollar tournament, and you lost eleven nine in the third. But still, unbelievable. So, congratulations. Thanks, thanks. Uh, Sayang, we had match point, and uh, but sometimes that's that's how it goes. So it was a good week making the finals, but uh, obviously, congrats to Ruben for winning the title last week, and uh, hopefully, more tournaments to come in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay. So right now. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because the ATP rankings are always changing. They're so fluid. So, Tret, you're 105 ATP rank right now. Is that correct? Is that correct, or have you moved? Sure. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> and Ruben, 132. 123 this week. Oh, 123. Yeah. 120. <laughs> yeah, that's super count. So you are both. Well, Tret anyway is going to try to make it to the U.S. Open, right, Tret? What are the chances of you getting into that? Yeah, I'm a couple out. So if there's there's always usually a couple pull outs if uh, people are injured or tired or sick before the tournament. So yeah, I'll be there to hopefully uh, be ready as kind of a standby alternate and be there next week. Uh, so that's the plan now. And hopefully, obviously you never hope people get hurt or sick, but yeah, sometimes <laughs> you do, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so you you have to be in the in the city, right? Because it's like it's like you have to be there. If they call you, you can't be like you know somewhere else. You have to be like practicing, obviously. Right? right yeah right so i'll be there practicing the first couple of days and kind of kind of just seeing all the other players and hopefully have a chance to get in play whenever the first rounds are wednesday or thursday so that's the plan i'm just hoping for the best yeah. okay ruben let's go to go back first to your win that you just had um it was an incredible run for you and your partner tell us more about your partner I understand you've been playing with him for so many weeks now you've been on the road 12 weeks in a row and then how, you beat so many seeded players in the tournament including the number one seeds in the finals yeah um i'm playing with a, <clears throat> an american guy reese stalder who played in college at tcu and uh yeah we've been playing for a few weeks had some decent results we made the finals of a challenger in georgia about a month ago and then obviously mm -hmm. uh we won uh this challenger and uh Actually, the team we beat in the finals, it's playing the U.S. Open. They got in the U.S. Open. So it was a good win for them because they've, they've won a few challenges here. So uh, he played a great, great match, and uh, we played a great match as a team as well. So it was nice to, to get through that. And, uh, yeah, had a good win first round against the three seeds. So I think, um, yeah, you know, some, some solid results. And then, you know, finally a really, really good one to, towards the end of the trip is always good. And we have another opportunity this week. Uh, um, in Canada, so looking forward to that. And uh, I noticed the surface because I was looking at your Instagram. The surface, I thought first it was like grass, but I said I don't think they have grass in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> what courts were those? <laughs> it was green clay. I mean, they have a lot of green clay, like in Florida, and that's kind of the 
standard clay court in the States. But, uh, yeah, that's what they have in the Dominican Republic. So looked like I shell. Played... <laughs> huh? <laughs> it's like yeah. shell, no? Parang like a green, like a thin green clay, right? Yeah, it's just like, it's, yeah, it's, it's basically clay. It plays a little bit faster. But actually, it rained a ton, so it was playing really, really slow, especially in the finals. We had to play uh, two matches on the last day, and it rained a few times, so it, it was playing really, really slow. So wow! Wait, so you're still you're you're playing sudden death in those tournaments? Yes. Yeah. All oh. the tournaments. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's that's. I still can't get over the double sudden death, but that's the way it goes, right, Tret? I mean, but yeah. I mean, when did that sudden death start, Tret? Like. Do you remember? Right when Ruben and I started playing, I think 10, 11 years ago, maybe on tour, they started changing yeah. it to get more of the singles players to play singles and doubles. So yeah, it's it's been good for the tour events, but the Grand Slams are kind of normal scoring, two out of three sets, whereas Wimbledon's still three out of five sets, so it's, it's longer and, and tougher sometimes. But yeah, Ruben was selling it short. He actually won three matches on Saturday. He won the quarterfinals, semifinals, <laughs> and finals on Saturday. So yeah, that was oh my unbelievable God. effort. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> So the sudden death for our tennis, um, for our non-tennis uh, viewers is at 40 all. Whoever wins the next point wins the game. So that's pretty tough. And the third set is always a super tie break. Am I right? First to 10. Yeah. Except yeah. in the Grand Slams. Except in the Grand Slams. And Davis Cup, yeah. And Davis Cup. Okay, Tret, um, tell us about the tournament in Canada where you reached the final your partner, how long have you been playing with him? And are you playing any more tournaments together? Yes, uh, I played with JP Smith, this Australian uh, player, and he and I played played well. We had a good win over the number one seeds first round and and uh, played well the whole week and up to the finals and and uh, played a good match in the finals and kind of had some chances to close it out at the end, but we just weren't able to do it. And that's sometimes it happens, you know. Uh, we. We won a couple of matches where we maybe should have lost here and there, and uh, but this was just the opposite, where we probably should have closed it out at the end, and it uh, just didn't work out our way. But uh, it was a good week making the finals, and uh, JP and I are going to start practicing again this weekend and start next week in New York and hopefully get in US Open and, and do well. So yeah, we're excited for that, and hopefully it works out. But uh, yeah, that's the, that's the plan the next uh week or so trying to keep improving playing well the last couple of weeks to so try to keep moving up the rankings and, and uh, make a comeback all the way all the way back up the rankings yeah come back for sure so i wanted to talk about that final i saw the score seven six six seven eleven nine in the third and you had match point at nine eight in the third set am i right yeah we had were, you, were you got, were you serving set. No, we were receiving, but we also <laughs> served for the second set. So served six five in the second set. So yeah, we we got thirty love. My partner was serving up thirty love, and we just didn't couldn't find a way to win that game. So you made you made an unreal move seven five in the super tiebreaker when you yeah. watched it and you made. I was like, it's over. They're gonna win now. So yeah, that's what I thought too. <laughs> <laughs> I was tight. I, so I turned it off like. <laughs> I wanted to ask you guys, you know, this the doubles results is so crazy because of the sudden death and just, you know, just all the crazy things that can happen in men's doubles in the Pro Tour. How do you handle it mentally? I guess you've been through so much of it, like at the brink of winning, at the brink of losing, and the result just goes the other way. How do you, I mean, what kind of a mindset do you need to have to be able to face uh, what you have to face in playing professional men's doubles i would say i mean obviously we've been doing this for a long time so we're we're kind of yeah. used to the stress of that scoring system but i would yeah. say the thing that's uh that works is like you got to know what your game is and kind of what what you're going to go to like how aggressive you're going to be in these certain moments and you know mm -hmm. i feel like the more aggressive you are the more that those kind of things turn your way so sometimes they're not sometimes they are but i think you it the same like try to play aggressive in those moments and i think if you do that more often than not it's gonna uh go your way so i think approaching it is the way that you have to do it approaching it the same what about you tread yeah it's it's for sure a roller coaster of emotions kind of ups and downs you think oh yeah we found found kind of a winning strategy let's keep it going here and there but it's it goes up and down where the other opponents can can kind of get that feeling here and there and uh, you really only have to play well in doubles the last 10, 15 minutes of the match to win 
So you have to, <laughs> if you're winning, if you're ahead at the beginning, you got to really keep up and keep going. Whereas if you're behind, you still have a chance at the end if you kind of turn it around for the last 15 minutes of the match, you can beat anybody. So that's where it's it's tough for sure to really keep that focus going into the end of the match. I mean, the pressure is like unbelievable. I watched a couple of uh, doubles matches in last year's US Open, men's doubles and even mixed doubles. And it's kind of like there's always a chance to win or to lose. So it's never over until it's over in, in doubles. Am I right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah. First serves are like super important, right? I mean, how yeah. important is it to win your serve in yeah. a match? In men's doubles, that's the biggest thing for sure. Getting winning your serve and kind of trying yeah. to put pressure and make the opponents play hard, tough points on their serve. Where the more you can do that, the better, and kind of build the pressure to to hopefully break their serve and kind of get control of the match. But it's about just kind of doing what you can do, controlling the things you can control, and and hopefully uh, that works out in your favor in the end. For sure. Yeah, I think there's a big balance too in like you got to serve high percentage of first serves, but at the same time, not take a lot of speed off your first serve because guys return so well that, I mean, you can't give guys looks at not well hit serves. So I think continue to be aggressive but at, at the same time, try to execute as best as possible. And um, that's really all you can do, you know, can continue to be aggressive and keep going for your serve. Um, because even if you, you take a little bit off your first, guys are going to get looks and you're not going to be winning as many percentage of those points. So. Okay, I know you've been doing so well playing separately, but you've also done incredibly well playing together. And this year, you you won. I mean, I was actually there. You guys won the Vietnam Sea Games. And then before that, you also won a tournament in Savannah last May, right? So uh, how much do you like playing with each other? Yeah, it's great. It was, it was great winning uh, an ATP Challenger with Ruben. Uh, a couple of weeks before Sea Games, I think that uh, gave us a lot of momentum and kind of confidence going into uh, when we got to Vietnam. We had the belief that we could play well and kind of mm -hmm. consistently do it. And so, yeah, we did it uh, in Vietnam and won gold in Sea Games. So, yeah, but playing on tour, hopefully we get to do it more and more. And, uh, yeah, Ruben and I have kind of had some good results the last year or two separately, and hopefully we can do that together. So, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, um, you know, we've been friends since we were about like 10 years old, so 10. it's been it's been cool like growing up together in, in the sport and uh, obviously to take um, a title in Savannah was really special, you know, to, to do it with a good friend and then to take, to win my first gold in uh, Vietnam was cool too to do it as well. So like Tret said, like hopefully we can continue to play together on tour and then hopefully in SEA Games next year and uh, going forward, things like that. Yeah, I, I, uh, last SEA Games in Manila, I, you, you guys won the silver, right? But it was also close. And then now, nakabawi kayo. So it was, yeah, it was, that, was, that was like a really, you guys played really well together in the, in the SEA Games final. Um, now, talking about the SEA Games, so aside from your playing all these pro tournaments, you are, are you committed to play in the SEA Games next year in Cambodia in, in May? Yeah, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, we, it was a great experience this year with the team. Uh, we have a really good team, I think, with Ruben, uh, Jason, uh, uh, Francis, and I, and some of the younger players uh, that were there as well. So, yeah, hopefully we can continue to do well as a team and uh, not only do well in the men's doubles, hopefully in the team event, the men's singles, the women's singles, women's doubles, mixed. I think we have a good team all around, and we're looking forward to next year's SEA Games as well to hopefully bring more medals home and more than one gold would be great. Ruben? Yeah, exactly. Sea Games That's, in Cambodia? For sure. Like you said, um, you know, it was an awesome experience winning gold and I would love to attempt to do it again. And like Chet said, it's like we would also like to win the team event. You know what I mean? It's like we won one gold, we want to win more. And um, yeah, like Chet said, I think we have a good young team and um, hopefully we can go and do even better uh, than we did this year in the team event. And uh, obviously he said as well as the women, we have a good women's team as well. So uh, I'm excited for, for next year. So how many, uh, Tret, how many C games have you played? played I think, um, I see I see you here, 2009? 2009, I think I've played, yeah. yeah. Everyone since 2009. <laughs> Everyone since 2009, right? That's yeah. a lot. Uh, 
and we did win the gold pala in 2009. Yeah, 2009, we won the gold in team, team event. Yeah, in team, team event. Yeah, and then, yeah. So for sure, that's a, that's a, a goal, right? For the SEA Games to win the team gold again. Is that how, yeah, how tough sure. is that going to be? That's one of the goals to get back and win the team gold. I think we had a, we had a shot last year or a couple months ago, I guess, in Vietnam. It just didn't go our way. But uh, yeah, hopefully next year, I think with a little more experience, our whole team will be kind of ready and give it a good shot to, to go for gold in the team event as well. And how many more tournaments are you playing in 2022, Ruben? Uh, I just looked at that today. I'm planning on playing 12 or 13 more. Wow, 12 or yeah. 13 more. Yeah, to the end of the year, yeah. Um, a goal of mine is to kind of try to finish uh, the year ranked close to top 100 I possibly can. And I think giving myself as many opportunities as I can and obviously will give me a realistic chance to achieve that goal or at least get close to it. So um, that's why after this week, I'm taking a couple weeks off to go train with my coach in California and mm -hmm. then start up and try to push hard for the rest of the year and uh, obviously set myself up for next year and all the tournaments and uh, hopefully play bigger tournaments and then get ready for SEA Games as well. Okay, so Tret, uh, on your end, of course, you played all the Grand Slams 2016 or in the semifinals of Wimbledon. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, your career high in doubles. ATP ranking was 18. Wasn't it higher than that? Yeah, 18. We finished number eight as a team that year, but yeah, 18 individually. Grabe. So, but then you were sidelined because you had an injury for a long time, right? How long were you out? I was out for a whole year, kind of end of 2018 and 2019. Yeah, so it's so super that you're you're back on fire. And um, how high do you want to go? Yeah, hopefully, uh, my goal is obviously to kind of beat my career high of top 18. Uh, but yeah, it's, a, it's still a long way to go. But I'm trying to take it day by day, keep improving. And uh, yeah, with the way I've been playing the last couple of months, I, I think it's possible for sure. Uh, just getting better. Not only physically, but game-wise, tennis-wise, I can still can still play at a high level. So I just want to keep keep doing well. I have kind of seen that I was able to do it at Wimbledon this year. Kind of even though we lost first round, I could see that I could play with kind of mm -hmm. the top guys and have the ability to do it. So it's just about doing it more and more, and consistently getting getting out there and trying to win win those matches uh, over and over. That's great. And along the way, you also just got married and had a child right Tret? yeah correct correct yeah so it's it's good to be home this week with with the baby help out uh it's just not not sleeping as much as anybody would like but that, that's for everybody i guess <laughs> okay ruben is still single but i know you're getting married but anyway so Tret, how do you do it uh when you travel to all these tournaments do you are you do you bring your wife and kid along or do you travel on your own they've come to some of the tournaments they came to wimbledon this year in london and they came to one of the turn two of the tournaments in florida so it's closer ones but it's just obviously easier with having the baby at home to kind of get more used to a regular schedule and everything but and it's easier for me to be at the tournaments where I not have to worry about uh the baby's naps and sleep and everything so yeah it's a uh, it's a good it's a win-win i guess when uh you're kind of focused on the tennis and practice and uh, the matches and you can really focus on winning yeah so how old is your baby now she's a year and a half almost wow yeah that's a, that's <laughs> i can see ruben smiling so ruben we all saw your engagement in 2019 with michelle so how is it going do you have are you do you have any yeah. wedding plans yeah our we set a date next year december 10th that's the plan oh yes obviously with all the things we're planning on getting married in the Philippines with all the kind of the COVID situations. We thought pushing it back would probably be the smartest thing. So that's, uh, that's the plan. Nice. Super exciting. Okay. You know, now I wanted to talk to you about uh, the Davis Cup. So you guys have been playing Davis Cup forever, also for the Philippines. And unfortunately, in the last uh, two years, we haven't been able to play because the Philippines is unfortunately still suspended. Um, with, the, with the ITF, the International Tennis Federation, uh, because of issues with our national sport, our National Tennis Association. Uh, how has that affected you? 
um, not being able to play Davis Cup and what are your wishes for this situation? Yeah, I think it's always been an honor to play Davis Cup and represent the country. And uh, yeah, it's been kind of tough for obviously not, not only for me, but uh, I think especially for the younger generation, I think it was so uh, key in kind of my uh, rise up the professional rankings and getting into the biggest tournaments in the world and the Grand Slams was playing Davis Cup and playing so many of the competitions uh, against the top players when I was kind of younger and moving up in uh, the tennis circuit and moving up the rankings. I think that was key for my success and kind of belief as a pro tennis player. And I think it's it's unfortunate for the younger guys who don't have that chance the last two years and hopefully, hopefully not next year, but hopefully it gets resolved soon because uh, not only, I don't know, is it a tough situation for me, but I feel like it's it's really tough kind of for the younger players when they could use that as an opportunity to get better and better as players and kind of move up in the world stage of tennis. Everybody's hoping that we get back into uh, with the ITF. Do you have any suggestions, solutions, how we how we could? Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't uh, I haven't talked to anybody in the federation at all uh, lately. But yeah, hopefully there's a resolution coming soon. I'm, I'm not sure if it was a suspension for more than two years, because I think this would be the second year that mm -hmm. uh, we were suspended. We were suspended last year and this year. So hopefully it's the end and there's everything is cleared and the ITF is, uh, uh, approves the selection of uh, our federation. The federation is you know, okay with how the ITF wants uh, things to be run, but that's, that's something that I obviously don't decide. And hopefully everything will be resolved and, and better by the end of the year so we can uh, play next Davis Cup next year. And hopefully there's no conflict where we we should be able to play c games and asian games next year as well that'd be uh really really tough for us that's something we're looking forward to and uh, something we can do really well at c games and asian games so hopefully that's that's not in doubt with, with that situation yeah let's hope that we get back into that we get uh, reinstated back hopefully sometime early next year right because there's so much i mean filipinos are really loving tennis now it's such a big focus on tennis of course, it was one of the sports that people picked up during COVID. It was one of the sports that was that was allowed that were allowed to be played. And with the success of you guys, plus of course Alex and other members of the team, we we have so many uh, tennis fans and tennis supporters now in the Philippines, um, hoping that we do even better in the international stage, like what you guys are doing. Your thoughts on Novak Djokovic? On uh, sort of not being allowed to play in the U.S. Open because he remains unvaccinated? Um, I think, obviously, he's a great champion, one of the best players to ever play the game. And for the game, um, it would be great for him to be able to play the tournament, obviously. And obviously, the reason he can are the obvious ones. I think it's uh, there's regulations, obviously, not being a foreigner unvaccinated. That's the reason why he can't play. So, I mean, if there's a way to figure out that he can, I think it's best for tennis overall to have you know one of the best players playing the tournament so that's kind of the situation and i don't know what they can really do about it but i like i said i think for tennis it'd be great for him to be able to play yeah i agree it's i i would love for him to be there the best tennis players in the world should be at the biggest tournaments in the world and uh it would be great to have him play a tournament but it's just kind of unfortunate that he's i don't know decided not to do what's required to play a tournament. So that's where it's tough, uh, tough situation, but there's nothing I can do about it. But I obviously <laughs> when you have a big tournament, you want to pl play the best players, beat the best players to win. So uh, yeah, it'd be amazing in my mind as a fan of the game as well to see Rafa play Novak in the finals. But also yeah. it's, at this point, it's just, it's Novak hasn't done what he needs to do to, to be there. So it's, it's kind of, it's, it's his decision. Yeah. So. That's, that's uh, yeah, super tough. I wanted to ask you also, who are some of the players that you like to watch? Like, who are your favorite players? Like, whether new, current, old, or whatever. Current or... Agassi yeah, current. Pro, for sure. Oh, Agassi, Agassi. Really. Ag Agassi and Patrick Rafter, and then I'd put Federer right in that group, too. Those are my, my, my three favorites. Oh, my gosh. They're all retired already. Anyone now? <laughs> Roger. Roger's not retired. On the brick. 
now Kyrgios for sure. Kyrgios is amazing. I feel like for tennis, he's kind of brought like a new, younger flair to the game. I feel like it's, mm-hmm. it's great for popularity of tennis, and it's hopefully the, this year it's been. I feel like amazing. We're getting to the Wimbledon final was uh, so I don't know so great kind of in terms of tennis for the younger viewers and younger fans. So hopefully that continues and uh, t- continues to grow the sport as well. I like yeah, Alcaraz I mean, too. Oh, yeah. I love I Alcaraz. Think Alcaraz. Huh? I, think he, I think he's amazing for the sport. I think he's a, an amazing player and obviously he has a bright future and hopefully a winning like multiple grand slams. I think he's a great player to watch and great for people, young kids to see and to look up to, you know, it's like uh, Rafa is about our age and, I remember seeing him in juniors and seeing his rise and it was really inspirational. Even being his age, seeing how advanced he was. Yeah. um, Just being an inspiration. I think for tennis, that's the biggest thing. You know, you see these players play and you see them on TV, whether it's TV or live, and it makes you want to practice harder. It makes you want to work harder to get to that level. So I think to have another kind of transcendent talent like that is really cool in the game. I mean, I remember watching Alcaraz last year in the U.S. Open. He was playing on an outside court against Nori, against Cam Nori, and he actually won that match. And, you know, Matthew, of course, my son, is like already, I mean, everybody heard about Alcaraz already, but he won that match. It was so big. And for him to like, wow, in one year, he's like top top five in the world. Yeah. A, uh, 19 years of age with an amazing mental attitude towards the game, such maturity and confidence. Like, wow. That's why I think he's really special is because there's not many 19-year-olds in the world that have that attitude and that confidence and that mental toughness. I mean, there's players much older in age that don't have the level of mental fortitude that he has. So it's pretty unique to see and I think pretty incredible to to have a talent like that playing tennis now. And I think it's going to be great for the sport um, as he continues to advance and, you know, become who he's supposed to be. Okay, so who do you pick to win the U.S. Open singles? Uh, I guess we're going to we're gonna assume that Djokovic is not playing. Who I'm would you pick? Daniel, Daniel Medvedev. Medvedev, okay. Defend his title. How about you, Chet? Carlos Alcaraz. Alcaraz. <laughs> Man, you know, when Alcaraz is on, he's really hard to beat, right? He just goes yeah. for everything. Sure. Without no fear whatsoever. So, it's the what ball. about Kyrgios? What about Nick Kyrgios? Yeah, he can do it, yeah. Dark horse. Yeah, right sure. now he's playing great. He's probably one of the top three or four favorites right now. Yeah. Can I change my answer? That's my answer. Oh, oh Kyrgios? <laughs> Nick Kyrgios, that's what I'm going to put it oh. down. That's my answer. <laughs> that's right. Nick Kyrgios on the fast court of the U.S. Open with his serves. Yes. Oh my gosh. And you know, like, yeah. Amazing guy. What what talent. With the oh yeah, the crowd. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. For sure. Okay. Well, uh guys, it's been so much fun talking to you. We can talk tennis for a long time, but hopefully we'll have more chats after more of your wins. Um I know that I just wanted to give you an opportunity to thank the people perhaps that um, enable you to play the tour and to make what you do and to make uh, to make you do what you do on the tour. So final words from you, Ruben. Um, first, I want to thank all the fans. You know, I, I hope you a lot. Everyone knows that, you know, I get a lot of messages on Instagram and Facebook, you know, mm. congratulating me even sometimes when things are going not well. And I think how people know that, that means a lot to me and, uh, it's a big reason why I continue to play and to continue to achieve or uh, chase my dreams is that the support of the people that, you know, who are fans of Filipino tennis and all that. And uh, thanks to the media, people like you, Diane, for supporting us as well and always keeping an interest. That's always uh, fun for us and uh, all the sponsors that help us. Sabuana Lulier, thank you for all the continued support. And uh, yeah, thanks to everyone. Thanks for to my partner, Tret. For carrying me this this year to a couple of big titles that was always fun so uh <laughs> looking, to, looking forward to continuing that as well tread yeah i would say thanks uh like ruben said to all the fans uh kind of showed a, a filipino tennis support and thank you diane as well for kind of highlighting tennis and bringing it more to the media and to the spotlight uh obviously i want to thank simona lulier for always supporting uh 
my tennis and kind of travels and everything. And uh, it's been great. And hopefully this isn't just, just the beginning. Keep going and uh, keep climbing the rankings and uh, get tennis bigger and bigger in the Philippines is always the dream of mine. And hopefully continue to do that, to try to do that. Yes, yes. So you get you get a lot of messages on your social media from Filipino fans. Yeah, yeah a lot, a ton. Yeah, it's great. It's great support. It's so many messages, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, it's a, the messages are a lot better when you win. It's, it's, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get a lot yeah. of Facebook, you know, people that you've never even met and um, saying like, yeah, you know, we follow you. We're big fans. Like I got a message from a guy the other day that saw me in the LA airport and he took a picture of me from of my backpack and he's like, I wanted to say hi to you and he sent it to me yesterday. And it's pretty cool that, you know, you know, they follow the game and they follow our our travels and the tournaments we play. I mean, it's pretty cool to know that, you know, people are taking an interest and in like like Tret said, like a big goal of ours is to continue to grow Filipino tennis uh, for the future generation so that more we can have more players, develop more players and uh, grow it so that it becomes a huge major sport in our country you know i think there's a lot of talent and uh it's there to be developed you know yeah thanks for showing the way and thanks for keeping on I, it takes a lot mentally and physically as we all know but that's why we love tennis <laughs> you, you cry cry after no i'm sure you guys don't cry after after a loss but it's painful after a loss but it's so set up after a victory so Keep going, guys. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Diane. Thanks for having Thanks, me. Diane. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So there you have it. Robin Gonzalez and Chet Yui doing their best on the ATP tennis tour. Let's cheer for them, pray for them. And as you heard it from them, they love getting the support of the Filipino fans. So Mabuhay, keep going. God bless and vamos. All right, that's going to do it for us in this episode of Plate Right. We hope you enjoyed this episode with Ruben and Chet. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And let us know who you'd like us to feature in our succeeding episodes. Until the next time, Diane Casillejo. Salamat.